Oh, the NFL draft is done. It is almost the end of May. What does that mean? Maka laka ding dong time, people. Mock draft number one happening right now. Stay tuned. Foot Clan, want to make sure you don't miss out on the pre-order pricing for the Ultimate Draft Kit. You know you're going to get it. You know you want to win in fantasy football this year. You know it's the best tool. It's got all of our sleepers, breakouts, bust values. We've got the upgraded Dynasty Pass. We've got, I mean, just literally everything you need from us to you to win. And right now, if you get it before June 1st, you're going to get the lowest price possible of the year. So go to UltimateDraftKit.com right now. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, uh, welcome in. <laughs> hey there, neighbor. Well, hey there, Mr. ASMR. How are you doing? I listened to the podcast. How incredible was that episode? Well, you guys were outstanding. And yeah. you, you mentioned that I had lost my voice, which I'm sure is not evident at this point. No, you sound fine. And you said maybe we could bring some ASMR to the, uh, to the podcast. Yeah, but let's not do that. Hey, guys. I don't Oh, I don't yeah, you it. don't like that. No, it, it's not only that I don't like it. It's it, – what is – like the, I guess the extreme version of of do not hating? like. Hating, I'd say hating. It's pretty common. No, but like an actual physical, visceral reaction happens. You know, like where I'm sure people you're like allergic to it. Yeah, where where like people a phobia people listen to it and they get uh, goosebumps and they get like you know pleasant feelings from it. You don't get that. No, no. It's <laughs> nails no. on a chalkboard. Yes, for you. yes, it is. I. It's overwhelming. I am in this seat today. All right, and I am I am happy to be because <laughs> because we, have we a- are doing a mock draft show. Jason, we talked about before the show. Andy's going to tee us up to say things, and he he. I'm going to keep it vague though, and <laughs> yeah. you're going to have vague, to- and I'm going to have to guess where you're going. It is a mock draft show. Uh, I was super excited all week to do. I didn't want to miss it. No, you didn't want to miss it. You're going to be here. And then let's be re- let's be realistic here. Here's what's going to happen. Andy is going to have Mike and I do the picks so that they're good. Yeah, great. And then he'll chime in and say something along the lines of, but wait, wait a minute, but wait a minute. And then he won't be able to get out more words than that, and we'll move on with a great pick. It will probably be exactly <laughs> that. Uh, we had a dynasty week, and we've got some winners. Yes, we do. Congratulations goes out to Tyler. Oh, oh, Tyler, someone are. What's your... <laughs> you said you were going to cue. You were going to tee me I up. I saw it on there at the last minute. You are not good at putting a ball on a tee. I know. Keeps it's falling off. <laughs> Some people won. It's a windy day out there. Uh, Tyler, what do we got? Uh, Isham? I don't know. You've been DM'd on Twitter. You won a very fancy signed AJ Brown jersey and over on Instagram we do not have your real name but we have at two ender 12 two ender or toe ender <laughs> I, re- I, I I was gonna go with toe ender but I realized that was not correct thank you to everybody who yes. shared their uh best yes. dynasty trades ever and shout out uh, so Tyler the night <laughs> this was crazy because I'm sure we all remember this. The night everyone said that Tom Brady was washed in Kansas City, he traded for Tom Brady that night who has helped him to win uh, a few titles over the next few years. And, I mean, you guys remember that, right? That's called buying the dip. That was, like, they were asking Bill Belichick, are you going to move on from Tom Brady? And Belichick was just furious, yeah. furious at that press conference. And then uh, the toe ender. Gave up Todd Gurley for two picks that turned into Antonio Gibson and Justin Jefferson. Oh, brother. That's also known as the worst trade that that other person has ever made. If Gurley had been good, it would have been a bad trade. Right. Yes. And then Gurley fell off a cliff. And um, let me check my notes here. Is not currently on an NFL roster. (sighs) Will he be? I think no. But maybe. Maybe? Does he want to be? Yes. Yeah. 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 
yeah, football players. He are, still they, thinks he's the best running back in the league. Is he right? He is no, not right. No, no, mm. no, no. I don't know if general managers will think he's right either. It'll be interesting. You always have those veterans that sign. Injuries happen. When you bring him in, he maybe he just admits, okay, maybe I'm like the third best running back in the league right now, but I, mean, I should be on this team. Right now, he was replaced by Mike Davis, and that was the right decision by the Atlanta Falcons. It Correct. was an upgrade for the Atlanta Falcons, and that tells you everything you need to know. Twitter, at the FF Ballers. If you want to follow the show, let's do some buy-sell. Buy or Sell, presented by Pristine Auction. All right, buy or sell Cooper Cup, a top 20 fantasy wide receiver in 2021. I have him as my wide receiver 18. Okay. The last three years, uh, he had the eight-game season. Then in 2019, he finished as the wide receiver four. Last year, the wide receiver 27. Team obviously made a change at quarterback. Cooper Cup is a little bit difficult. Like if you sure. if, if you look at players and you say like I know what this season is going to look like, or I am completely in the dark. He's closer to that side in the sense that you have a quarterback change. Who's the real Cooper Cup? And what will Matthew Stafford's tendencies be in this offense between Robert Wood, Coop, Robert Woods, Cooper Cup, Tyler Higby? And then this slew of young do, wide receivers. Do you have uh, Do you have your rankings pulled up in front of you? I do. Do you have Robert Woods higher or lower than Cooper Cup? What a great question, Mike. And I have him four spots lower. Okay, so interesting. I sided with Cooper Cup, and that's simple. I don't even need – Touchdowns? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm more confident that Cooper Cup will have – I'll probably – They'll compete on the reception totals, and he'll probably score more touchdowns. And I ask because this is a wild stat for as incredible as Matthew Stafford has been in his career as a quarterback. I mean, like an absolute yardage monster. Always. This, especially early on. Yeah, always he, throwing up tons of stats. A little, I mean, towards the middle, he was doing some more game-managing stuff, but he has been a very prolific stat compiler. Kyle the Borgogan has pulled this up that Matthew Stafford has supported top 24 teammates only once, which, I mean, I, I guess if you think about the wide receivers that he has had, you know, it was for a while, it was Calvin Johnson, and then it did not matter because you had Calvin Johnson. But in 2017, Marvin Jones, Golden Tate, both uh, top 24 teammates. He's had injured wide receivers right. as well. You, you would have expected the, the Galladay, Marvin Jones to right. both be top 24, but injuries have gotten in the way. So I'm not sure how prescriptive that is. That being said... When I look at my rankings, I have one in and one out, and and you bring up a fascinating point. Like, who is it going to be, Robert Woods or Cooper Cup? One will finish higher than the other uh, this season, and I have it flipped the other way. I've got Robert Woods. Incredible, Jason. Thank, thank you. Incredible, <laughs> Incredible. insight <laughs> and depth. Um, you see, there's two guys. <laughs> right, and they can't. Now, and to be fair, to be fair, they could tie. No, it is possible. It is possible that they score the exact same amount of fantasy one points. One of them's going to finish higher than the other. But I, I think Robert Woods um, <laughs> continues to be the first read in the offense, and uh, I have him higher than Cooper Cup. So right now, I'm going to sell this. I, I mean, have Cooper Cup just outside to say, of my top 20. Just to, be, just to use my voice when I shouldn't. Um, is it fair to say he's the first read? Continues to be the first read? Last year, Cooper Cup played one fewer game than Robert Woods. He had five fewer targets on the year, 129 to 124. He had more receptions in one fewer game last year. So Cooper Cup was, in fact, in my opinion, the number one. So when I saw that stat about can't support two, it really does come down to pick one to be the one. Mm -hmm. I have Robert Woods currently a few spots ahead of Cooper Cup. I mean, three. So right now. Robert Woods is just inside of my top 24, and Cooper Cup is just outside. So you are both cells. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I get like technically based off of my of my projections, but when you're living in the world of fantasy football and probability to have a player sitting there just two spots out of the top 24, that is definitely not a hard sell, but that is a projected sell. Why aren't people excited about Matthew Stafford? Uh, because his back has not allowed him to play a full season for a while. 
Why are people excited about Ryan Fitzpatrick but not Matthew Stafford? Yeah, uh, that's that's fair, right? Because people are excited. You know, Ryan Fitzpatrick is back, is good for fantasy, and, and Matthew Stafford is clearly a better quarterback, uh, should have more, uh, you know, prolific stats. Honestly, I was surprised when I went through the Los Angeles Rams, statted everybody out. Um, I, I, I think this is going to be a team that runs the ball quite a lot, even though they got Stafford. I think it's going to open it up for um, the running game, and, and I, I have a lot of their team touchdowns going through the running game versus the passing game with Stafford. So that's that's the way I see it going. I'm 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 just gonna say this. I'm too high on Cam Akers. I I am scared at my current Cam Akers ranking. And We're this is scared one of those, for you. This yeah. is one of those things where it's like you know, I'm not trying to put any player in any spot. I'm statting out what I believe is just going to happen and let the math dictate where things are. But then when I'm when I'm done, I've done a couple teams, I've done half the league, I've done three quarters of the league, I keep looking at these rankings waiting for Cam Akers to fall and be like, you know, a did reasonable you, uh, spot. I mean, <laughs> It's like, oh, no. Don't take this the wrong way, but did you um, did you uh, fat finger those uh, stat, Im <laughs> stat inputs? I, I should, I should double-check. No, they look like legitimate stats. And so it, just looking through it, Matthew Stafford, I – I, apparently, I forgot. He did play, or at least appeared in all 16 games last year. And here's why people are not excited for Matt Stafford. Quarterback 15 last year, he played in all games. 2019, quarterback 29, he missed half the season. 20, uh, 2018, quarterback 20, he appeared in all 16 games. So, it's been, it's been a while. It's been a hot minute since Matthew Stafford has done it. Well, and I don't think that people are more excited draft wise like people are going people treat him identical this. to Jared Goff really yeah i oh, mean i don't look, get that I mean, feeling at to all to prior jared goff to to the jared not goff not this of... jared goff i just mean like uh, okay, i feel like okay, we're okay. coming into the season with the exact same passing game viewpoint that we have with jared goff in the past and sure. I, and maybe that's maybe that's valid like jason and, said and if they want to run the football that's cautious optimism but i was i was going with the comparing of of Matthew Stafford to Ryan Fitzpatrick, where Fitzpatrick can't hold on to a starting job, but at least when he's out there, we're getting really high-level fantasy but play. Brooks has a different theory uh, as to why he doesn't get the respect of Fitzpatrick Brooks. Why what? is that? That that glorious beard mm, that Fitzpatrick yeah. has. Can Stafford grow a beard? I'm, I think I, he could. Yeah, I think so. I really do. I, I think that he just hasn't really explored himself yet. Uh, to see, you know, what kind of facial hair he can come up with, but uh, you know, it, maybe it'll take retirement. But I want to see Stafford with a, just a monster beard. I mean, if, as you grow up, and, and, and there are follically challenged fellas out there, I get it. No judgment. Some not everyone can uh, grow a beard. Brother-in-law, oh, goodness, he not to save his life. I mean, if he had to grow facial hair, just it doesn't happen. But if you can, I feel like this is a Spider-Man with great power comes great responsibility sure. if you can grow a beard how do you not at least once in your life see what your face can do maybe see maybe, what you're maybe made he of. has and maybe that wasn't Ooh. a good journey well maybe that journey was scary or maybe he can't we, I, we don't or know. maybe he can't yeah and then i'm moving him down to my rankings yeah for sure <laughs> i'm i you know i'm gonna add that to this i'm gonna sell the stafford beard mm. uh because we haven't seen clearly it. we gonna, have i mean i Al Borland's sending me pictures of Stafford Beard, and clearly I've just blocked this out of my mind. He had what? a beard? Oh, he had Sta a full old beard. He had a beard? Oh, he's got a big beard. It's not, what? But it doesn't look as no. good as uh, as Fitzpatrick. There's no way. No. All right. Yeah, you got to sell that beard. He had a beard? Um, that's buy or sell from Pristine Auction. Oh, that, that's because that's he, he's rocking a Lincoln. Yeah, the, it was too wide. Not no, by no, choice. No, no, no. The, uh, uh, the, the oh, stash. The, no mustache? Yeah. Yeah. You got to You got to have the full... The full mustache for the beard to All look beard good. All beard mustache. Um, or maybe he's just got a blonde mustache. It's really maybe. difficult to tell in that picture. Um, anyways, that he was... Sh he uh, should dye it. Jason, you could tell him about that, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. You got you to gotta, you gotta stay young, Stafford. Um, <laughs> that was Buy or Sell from Pristine Auction. Uh, PristineAuction.com. Use the registration code BALLERS when you sign up to make an account on Pristine Auction. You'll get a $10 credit. News and notes from around the league. Presented by Sleeper. Breaking news. Matthew Stafford had a beard. And we none of us remember it. I don't feel like that was Matthew the... Matthew Stafford did have a beard. That was the friendliest <laughs> Matthew Stafford segment we've ever had. 
<laughs> Stanford has received plenty of love on this show. Can you go backwards cap with a beard? You can do that, uh, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I've uh, been on this show many times with a backwards cap. He, he literally, just so you know, literally in the picture you just looked at with him he had with a backwards beard. Cap. He's got a backwards cap on. So, yes. Here's some news for why, you. Why can't we remember anything about Matthew Stafford? Who? <laughs> This is big news, guys. Oh. Adam Schefter reporting Joe Burrow. All uh, systems go for week one. Yeah. No, that's great. That That's really important good news. I looked deeper into this report to see where it's coming from and what they're doing with the knee, and they, they are really, really – I know it's always like we, we joke on this show about – Everyone is always ahead, ahead of, of the is timeline. Is he ahead of schedule? He's always ahead of the timeline, ahead of the schedule. Because the schedule is bad. Because if everyone is ahead of schedule, that's not the real <laughs> schedule. Um, but they're they're using, you know, this this is this is the number one pick in the NFL. They are uh, pulling out all the strings, all the stops. They're talking about his recovery, his dedication to it. Um, and I, I believe he'll be ready to go week one. Now, that, that being said, when you are ready to go week one for complete full go, that is like preseason is not that. So you're not really fully mentally and reps wise ready to go week one. Even if physically your knee could take it, you're going to be the starter out on the field. Right. He's not going to get normal preseasons in a normal training camp. Um, so I, I do expect a slower start, but I think he starts 17 games or at least starts week one. Jason tweeted that. One team he could see Julio Jones being traded to is the Colts. And the fact that T.Y. Hilton a little over the hill maybe, um, he hasn't stayed healthy. Pittman is is yet to establish himself beyond the single route we watched him run all year long. And this guy, Paris Campbell, who now says he is 100%, <sighs> has been hurt for two consecutive years. Now, he was heavily involved last year at the beginning of the season. But for that, what, that game. For that game. And, yeah. and the thing is, is it, it's really not – we all have high hopes and had high hopes for Paris Campbell. Well, what's but when you do this, Brashad Perryman, when you do this multiple times, you don't get the same opportunity because the team isn't going to rely on you in their game planning. So I am worried about Paris Campbell's opportunity as much as I am his health. Yeah, when you're on team Paris Campbell on this podcast and then someone is not, uh, specifically me, Jason Moore, and then you're – and then Jason is right just de facto because we haven't seen Paris Campbell. It's very frustrating. I, I, I can't even imagine how frustrating it is for Paris, for, Campbell. For Paris the man. Uh, but Probably at least as much as you. Maybe a little more. I'll give him a little okay. a little dash more. But I believe in the player. Like I believe in the skill set of Paris Campbell and that if he could just stay healthy – that he would be incredibly involved. Well, Jason and I have been meaning to tell you this, and I'm, I'm going to speak for us both, Jay. Okay. Um, we were dead right about the Blake Jarwin bus season. Mm. Oh, yeah, you did. You got me. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. did. That's yeah, right. I mean, that, it, one, that one felt pretty good. Yeah. That was uh, a <laughs> home, home run. Antonio Brown. What, what's great about Blake Jarwin is that you also dunk on us because of Dalton Schultz's success. Yeah. As though no Blake one can Jarwin be wrong. succeeded. <laughs> It's great. Antonio Brown had some knee surgery. Is that true? Yes. And so he's got to pass his physical before he can officially sign. But he is, uh, you know, so did Tom Brady also had knee surgery. These are not big, you know, ACL tears. Sounds like the key to a Super Bowl. Did you get some uh, some stems plugged in there? Probably. That's can I get my some, guess. Can I get some leaves? If if uh, if it's Brady, there's definitely some greenery going into those knees. <laughs> Do they water him at night? <laughs> yes, he wakes up. He, he sleeps in the soil? He might sleep in the soil. The plant man. A big pot. Where's my plant man, Al? Oh, oh. man. All right. Uh, that was today's news and notes. Presented, as always, by our good friends at Sleeper, who and also are bringing you the mock draft They, today. indeed, we will be drafting today on the Sleeper platform. And before mock a lock a ding dong time, fellas. Mock. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I didn't know where you were going, man. We're all discombobulated today. Uh, I want to thank today's sponsor. You're welcome. Today's sponsor, Babbel, for most of us learning a second language in high school or college wasn't exactly the high point of our academic careers. Now, thanks to Babbel, the number one selling language learning app there is a fun and an easy way to learn a new language. They have 15-minute lessons to make it the perfect way to learn a new language on the go. 
Babbel designs their courses with practical, real-world conversations in mind, things you'll get to use every day. Uh, their teaching method has been scientifically proven to be effective, and you can choose from 14 different languages, including Spanish, French, Italian, and German. And they, they have uh, speech recognition technology that helps improve your pronunciation and accent. That's where... That's where things really went wrong for me in my in my Spanish learning days. My accent. Can they give me more volume? Uh, babble. Yeah. No, but okay. they can improve your pronunciation, <laughs> but not your volume. Uh, and right now, when you purchase a three month Babbel subscription, you'll get an additional three months for free. That's six months for the price of three. Go to babble.com. Use the promo code Footballers. That's b a b b e l dot com. Code Footballers. For an extra three months for free, Babel language for life. And Footland, if you're looking for a good sleep, you're looking for Helix sleep because my look, I I have been using this. I know all three of us have Helix mattresses. Today, literally today, just before we started recording, another Helix mattress showed up at my house because I replaced oh, another one of my mattresses. Congratulations! If that's not a good endorsement, I don't know what is. Look, these mattresses are fantastic. You don't as have long to take... as you weren't replacing the other Helix. No, no, I was not. I was replacing an old busted mattress. Then I'm like, look, this Helix is awesome. You you go on, you take a super easy quiz. It takes two minutes. It matches you with your body type, your sleep preferences. It finds the perfect mattress for you. We all took the test, and we all ended up with different mattresses. Like it was, and for me, I got a plus size mattress, which was pretty. Good. Look, our, so we know that when we do our, our live streams that Team Hefty Boys, they show oh, up. Oh, Team they Hefty Boys, where you at? <laughs> You're here with me. You're here in Helix Sleep. Look, the Helix mattresses are awesome. You don't have to take my word for it. They were awarded the number one best overall mattress pick of 2020 by GQ and Wired Magazine. You're going to go to helixsleep.com slash footballers. Helix is offering up to $200 off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners at helixsleep.com slash footballers. That's helixsleep.com slash footballers for up to $200 off and two free pillows. The Fantasy Footballers Mock Draft. So exciting. We will be drafting, like we said today, on the Sleeper platform, the fastest growing fantasy platform uh, in existence right now. We will be using Sleeper. For all of our 2021 mock drafts, Sleeper is the best because they, they they are responsive. They are updating and actively working on the ADP. They It's a customizable platform for mocks and for fantasy leagues. And legitimately. If something's not right, we give them a hard time. We, well, we give them a hard time, and you can too. You just follow them on Twitter, tag them, and they are incredibly responsive to, to anything that needs to be fixed. They're nimble. Yes, they're, they're, they they don't they're not nimbly, nimbly, nimbly. Nimbly. they're not like turning a cruise ship. <laughs> they're they're on a speedboat, right. and uh, it's a good time. All right, what uh, during the off season we do a number of mock drafts. Sometimes they are head to head to head. Sometimes we share a team so that we have more time to discuss kind of the thought process behind the picks. Now, Kyle, one of our uh, staff members here, has really aired. Because he declared a 2020 Makalaka Ding Dong champion, and he said Mike won last year's mock draft. Oh, that's yeah, nonsense. What, but, 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 but here's what here, here's what the problem is. That you lost? Well, certainly. But, yeah, I would have a different, <laughs> I'd have a different viewpoint. But the problem is, is that we don't mock draft to win the mock draft. We actually, one of the reasons these shows exist and why we discuss these picks live and do a live mock draft is because we often experiment with the way you form your team. We are taking different chances on different picks. We're sure. seeing what a team looks like when you, you know, go this direction, RB heavy, or you go this direction, wide receiver heavy, or a tight end early. So I just want to say that's the goal. The goal is to experiment and to see a lay of the land to give you guys out there who are listening a bit of insight about what's taking place right now with average draft position and to help. Yeah, if, if you have not put mock drafting into your personal arsenal, it's just it's fun to do. You could do it as sleeper, and it is really advantageous. It allows you to be prepared for, oh, what if this tier of quarterback doesn't go to where I where I want to draft? What is my pivot going to be? If mm -hmm. this if if this player falls to me and I really, you know, I wouldn't usually take them, but they came so low, what does my team look like? So mock drafts, and it's just fun to do. You get the tilt out. 
Yeah, you get the tilt out. Exactly. You tilt less if you mock draft more. <sighs> Trademark. Um, <laughs> we're, we're at a spot in this draft where I feel like you need a lot of experience. I'm already why, tilted. Why don't you give a lay of the land what we're doing in yeah. terms of the, the format? So we're, we are drafting a team. It's two running backs, two wide receivers, one flex, a tight end, and a quarterback. It's half PPR, our, prefer, our preferred format. We are at the 12 eighth team. spot. Um, and the eight spot to me, right, right around that, like eight, nine, ten range, is really, really difficult to me this year. You see, the beginning of the first round are all the running backs you would expect. In fact, in this mock draft, here's the beginning of the first round: Christian McCaffrey, no surprise, and went Kamara, Barkley, Derrick Henry, Dalvin Cook, Ezekiel Elliott, and Nick Chubb. So those running backs are off the board. First seven picks, all running backs, and now we're at pick eight. Do we pick the eighth best running back? or the best wide receiver, or the best tight end. There's a lot of different ways you can go. This is why we're mock drafting. See what happens here. 12-team snake draft. We're at number eight. Jason just laid it out. Now, it might not be who we think is the eighth best running back. Jonathan Taylor still on the board. Devontae Adams at wide receiver. Tyreek Hill, who I know are our top two in some order. And then you brought up the fact that, you know, uh, that dream scenario the other day of Travis Kelsey being somehow – your second round pick now that normally happens when you're around the turn and uh, but it could happen here and to me i mean we're in this we're all in this very bizarre world of is aaron Rodgers a green bay packer because there are two picks that completely make sense here if he is Devonte adams that's a great pick he's the number one wide receiver aaron jones has been incredible the past couple years but both of those players, especially Aaron Jones, takes a massive dip in fantasy value if it is, in fact, Jordan Love as the quarterback. Your scoring opportunities are going to go way down. At pick number eight here, because I am i don't know if I love Adams, I don't love Hill, I'm all in, man. I'm pushing my chips in right here, and I would take Travis Kelsey. So I, would not, I would not play the game. I'm taking the elite tight end, the elite number one tight end. I'm not messing around with... I think this is the year that George Kittle or Darren Waller. No, it's not done for Travis Kelsey. Zeus will ride again for one more year. I, I would I would agree with you. I think for the purposes of this mock draft, you have to assume the team as it is. Right now, Aaron Rodgers is is there. So, I, I you know, I would, I would argue that Devontae Adams maybe should be the pick here. But just like Andy was explaining, the point of mock drafting is see what happens. I, I have not really mock drafted a team yet where I'm taking Travis Kelsey with my first pick. I know I'm going to love that positional advantage, but how much am I going to hate the rest of the roster, my running back and wide receiver depth? So I say this is the time we do it. Um, the only thing I would say okay, is that Jonathan Taylor is in a, 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 a tier that I think will not get back to us. Jonathan Taylor, Aaron Jones, they're not coming back. Travis Kelsey could come back. I'm with you. I, I don't mind the experiment. I so think on the board, Jonathan Taylor, Aaron Jones – Austin Eckler, Cam, Cam Akers. Akers, Joe Mixon, Antonio Gibson. Yeah, I mean, and I see Taylor in a, just a different tier than okay. those I, guys. I, I have him. He is my highest ranked running back of the remaining guys, but okay. they're I, all in a tier that let's you try, give me Kelsey I, in one of those, we're good. Yeah, I actually have Akers, Mixon, and Eckler all ahead of Jonathan Taylor in, in my rankings. How the turntables. How with the Jonathan, turntables. With Jonathan Taylor. How incredible. <laughs> all right, I like the experiment. So – we took Travis Kelsey. We've been saying pretty much all off season the fact that he belongs here, right? Um, instead of playing games like Mike said, we went Kelsey at the 108. 12-team draft, so Adams, Taylor, Hill, Jones, A.J. Brown, Joe Mixon, DeAndre Hopkins, and Cam Akers. And by the way, off the board. Uh, YouTube.com slash fantasy footballers. Uh, number one, you should be subscribed and checking out the show up there. But for all the mock drafts, we have the board going up here. So it's the fantasy football. Oh, is it? It is. Ah, whatever. We should. They'll find us. Can we get both? No, Mister Mister and Mrs. YouTube won't allow that. Mister and Mrs. YouTube. <laughs> oh, have, man, that's a bummer. They frown on the double URL. Uh, but anyway, so you can check it out and follow along with the board. Yeah. So so lay of the land right now. What are you guys thinking? We went Kelsey. I just read who went off the board after us. The first uh, picks you mentioned. Did you ever read them off? Uh, yes. I did read yes, the beginning did. of the draft. Okay. Yeah. So now we're sitting at a place where obviously the 
top running backs the, the top running backs are now gone in into the second round there's still a handful Eckler is there Antonio Gibson is there um and the top tier you know Devontae Adams Tyreek Hill um AJ Brown and DeAndre Hopkins are gone so we're really looking at that kind of Stephon Diggs, Stephon Diggs Steph is still there Stephon Diggs um Antonio Gibson and Austin Eckler those are the three players that I think we would be between here um at this point the pick for me is Diggs. Okay, you're gonna you're gonna punt on the early running back. I would like to try it. Whew. I mean, I'm I'm fine with it. Uh, Stephon Diggs is my number three. He is my number currently. three as well. And four four other wide receivers off the board. I don't feel like we are losing anything from the Adams pick to to Diggs here. I yeah, I agree with that wide receiver value. We are at our long wait <sighs> as we go out. That's so scary. Um. Could always go zero RB here. Yeah, we we, we certainly can. Um, I think Mike, if you make the pick, okay, perfect. If if the pick is to me, then oh man, that is really really tough to go between Stephon Diggs and my champion, uh, Jason. If if you were to make the pick, <laughs> <laughs> um, look, I I I do have Diggs higher, but I know what happens if you end up not taking a running back here. If I were to not take a running back here, I personally would change my entire draft philosophy and I would try a zero RB approach. I'm not sure I want to do that right now. So I would lean Gibson personally if that's who that's See, your I have, champion. I have here. Eckler ahead of Gibson. I do I do as well. I was I was letting Mike make the pick yeah. with his uh that was who your champion is, is that correct? Yes. Okay. Have you have you ever listened to this show? I've been I've heard it once or twice. Make the pick, Mike. Uh, all right, let's go Stephon Diggs then, because <laughs> oh. we, we can't agree on the running back. All right, okay. It's gonna get nasty at running back. Let's see what happens. Ridley, Eckler, Metcalf, Allen Robinson, Justin Jefferson, Gibson. I'm sorry, off the board, and Keenan Allen wrapping up the second round. And we go Kittle, Mahomes, Dobbins, Edwards, Swift, Michael Thomas, and Chris Carson. Chris Carson in the third would have mm. been a delight if he had gotten back to us. Running backs on the board right now, Miles Sanders, Najee Harris, David Montgomery, Josh Jacobs. Not that bad. No, it's not that bad, and especially because we've got Mike's guy, Miles Sanders, still there. Um, it's one of his favorite players. It's someone that he just expects great things for this year, and he really wants his brand associated with. Um, you know, I, there there are this is this is uh, erroneous. <laughs> this is uh, very erroneous. So you'll be hearing from my lawyer. Um, we're at our short turn now. It won't be too long before our next pick. So I, I think we just take whoever we think the best player uh, on the board is between running back or wide receiver. I like the fact – I mean, I don't know how far Najee's going to keep falling in um, – you know, as as we get closer to the offseason. Like, I'm wondering if he gets around to our fourth pick. Um, I don't think that will happen if this was – if we're doing a mock draft in August. I think Najee will agree. continue to climb up the boards. I have Montgomery significantly higher than Najee. I have Montgomery significantly lower. David Montgomery is not in my top 20 at the running back position. Um, and then at wide receiver, you've got Julio Jones there, and you've got Terry McLaurin um, still available. So certainly great options. Um, Short weight coming back in the fourth round, fifth pick of the fourth round. There are a lot of wide receivers I still like. When I look at the board and I see Mike Evans and Julio Jones, uh, Amari Cooper. The, I, wow. I, I Let's think take a balanced approach here. Jason, decide between Najee Harris and David Montgomery. Then I will take Najee. All right, Najee Harris off the board. Miles Sanders goes next. Chris Godwin, Terry McLaurin, Julio, 12th pick of the third round, Julio Jones. What a world. Could be a steal. What a world. Could be an A.J. Green experience. Who knows? Uh, Darren Waller. First pick of the fourth round, Montgomery, Cooper, Evans. We are back. Josh Jacobs is available in the fourth round. Uh, at wide receiver, you've got Woods, Galladay, Lamb, Thielen. Um, I am. Uh, I think Josh Jacobs is well worth the pick here. I have him higher than Najee. I have him higher than Montgomery. You have Josh Jacobs ranked higher than Najee. I do. I think this is an issue of where Najee is ranked for Andy is my guess. Because um, how and, high up do you have Josh Jacobs? Josh Jacobs is presently my thirteenth ranked running back. Ooh, spicy! Um, this was the running back eight last year. In case you were curious, 
Yes. I think the Kenyon Drake signing has obviously had a lot of people scratching their heads as to how will that utilization yes. Yes. Uh, you know, go. And, and maybe that's going to be what allows Josh Jacobs to get to the fourth round and be a, be a value if they use Josh Jacobs the same way they used him last year. It's just hard to see them paying so much money for Kenyon Drake and then not having that eat into Josh Jacobs' role which is a shame. Uh, wide receivers on the board. You got C.D. Lamb, Adam Thielen, Robert Woods. Um, so there's there's certainly a lot of players. To recap, right now we've got one running back, one wide receiver, um, and one tight end. So we're going to be on our long wait. I think it's important here that we grab um, – Andy, where do you, in your stats, has C.D. Lamb ended up? Well, he's below Amari. Yeah, but he's Amari's tw- 20th off the at the wide receiver position. Okay. Cuz he's he's difficult for me of uh I have him at 28. I feel like that's too low. But you have to I mean you have to project a pretty significant I like Josh Jacobs cuz I think he's bump. by far the volume leader of all the remaining running backs. That that's and what I was going to say. And you've already got a rookie in Najee Harris. So I I just love the fact that I'm going to get 250 carries from Josh Jacobs. You know, you guys brought up the money they spent on Kenyon Drake, but they always took work away from Josh Jacobs. They always had Devontae Booker on the field when you didn't want him to, or Jalen Rashard. When I look at the running backs that you're going to find in rounds five, six, seven, eight, they are they're just garbage. They're just absolute trash. I don't want to select them. Josh Jacobs here is uh, someone that I think helps our team, whereas there's plenty of wide receivers in those rounds that I like. So I, I would lean with you, Andy. I would take Josh Jacobs. He's he's a tier above the Miles Gaskins and uh, Kareem Hunts. He's still the primary guy on his team, and he's super talented. He's also, what, 22, 23 years old? Um, 23. It kind of rotated into my pick on that one anyway, so we'll go with Jacobs and That's see fine. how it turns out. Uh, Josh Allen, second quarterback off the board. Deontay Johnson, CeeDee Lamb, DJ Moore, Robert Woods, Galladay Cup. Big run on wide receivers. If you're watching on YouTube, you can see that. Thielen, Gaskin, Hunt, Lamar, ETN, Mark Andrews, TJ Hawkinson. That's a great value on Hawkinson. Hawkinson's going to explode this year. So um, let me just throw this out. The, figuratively. You, right, <laughs> figuratively. Um, the, uh, at the I, fifth, need to, I need to clarify that. The That's back, very important. That's my for, role. Well, for, for legality sake. It's my yes. role here. We're at the back of the fifth round, um, and I think that the number one quarterback in the uh, entire NFL is available. Now, I would oh, not draft him oh, here. Oh, doggy. Uh, and this is one of those things what did where you just say? I said that the number one quarterback in fantasy this year is still available towards the back end of the fifth round. He, quarter- he is for me as well, but that's... What's he doing here? I don't know, but I would not draft him, and here's why. It's Kyler Murray, it's, by the yes, way. Yes, Kyler Murray <laughs> the secret, is still... They can be in on the secret. <laughs> Secrets. <laughs> it's a fantasy football show, but we don't actually name names. Right. Right. Um, <laughs> you know who we mean. You know, through week 11 last year, he was far and away the quarterback one. He got injured, <laughs> hurt his shoulder. He was on a 17-game projected pace for 4,500 yards, 32 passing touchdowns, another 1,000 rushing yards, and another 17 rushing touchdowns. Then he hurt his shoulder yeah, and sucked the rest of the rest. I, w- I would not take him here either. The rest of the year. And I know why. Because I love Aaron Rodgers. Uh, I love Tom Brady. I love Dak Prescott. I'm fine with Russell Wilson. I'm fine with Justin Herbert. I'm fine with I'm know. fine with all of them. That's why we're usually late round quarterback drafting uh you know fellas. As a, fellas, yes, is the word I was looking for. But the the reason I would not draft him is because we have Travis Kelsey. Taking two of your onesie positions in those first five picks is going to leave your running backs and wide receivers so incredibly shallow. I just don't think you can do it. But I did want to talk about Kyler. You know, we haven't really brought yeah, him up fair. much on the show yet. At wide receiver. We have Diggs. We have Kelsey, a positional advantage. Harrison Jacobs. I really like how this draft is turning out, by the way. At wide receiver, though, on the board right now, Tyler Lockett's available. Odell Beckham's available. Sutton's available. Um, those are the names standing out to me in terms of known commodities at the position with target totals that would make us happy. I feel like with Diggs and the level of PPR, like he could very well lead the league in receptions again. Mm-hmm. It gives you a little bit more of that comfort zone for someone like Tyler Lockett, who will have a little bit of a consistency issue, 
But that gets masked by Travis Kelsey. That gets masked by Stephon Diggs, and he can win you a week. Yeah, I mean, so Lockett was, is very. He was still the wide receiver nine last year on the course of the season. I know it was very inconsistent, but Lockett put up a lot, uh, a lot of points, and I think he's going to do the same this year. Lockett would be my pick. This Lockett would be my pick. This spot. All right, we've got a unanimous pick here. That's I think we're going to lock it in. I think we're going to have a very interesting pick though next. Kyler Murray went right after Tyler Lockett. Then uh, we have David Johnson, Dak Prescott, Chase Edmonds, T. Higgins, Ronald Jones, James Robinson, and Melvin Gordon. We're back on the clock. And oh, we've got two running backs, two wide receivers, and a tight end. Mike, what is the old man? The old, the old man is Odell Beckham <laughs> being available in the sixth round of a fantasy football draft. I get... It's been a really, really long time since Odell Beckham has done those, the things that we remember him for. But it's hard to shake the memories of what Od Odell Beckham has done for for a fantasy football team. And you saw, I mean, he was hurt early on, a torn ACL. He should be good to go. And you saw the improvement of the Cleveland Browns. You saw the improvement of Baker Mayfield over the second half of the season. And I don't say, well, the team got better because they lost Odell Beckham. No, the team got better because they were learning a new system with a new head coach and a, and a new – just everything's brand new for Baker. But things clicked over the second half of the season. It does Beckham have one more <laughs> – one more ride. Nope. One more. Oh no, Jason, no, he don't doesn't. Do this. He doesn't have another ride. I, I feel like I, you're drafting a great name here, and I understand that. But this is a team that's going to run the ball that hasn't ever clicked with Odell Beckham. He hasn't been able to stay healthy. It's a fool me six times, shame on me situation. So that, that's my stance. Like I, right. sometimes the question is asked, who's the player on your board that it doesn't matter how far they fall, you won't draft him. I didn't realize until this moment moment that it's Odell Beckham. Like he. I don't care if it was the eighth round, the ninth round. I there's there's players I like. I just don't believe anymore. There, I think there are more wide receivers that I like later than there are running backs. And Raheem Mostert is on the board here in the middle of the sixth round. We had Kyle Juszczyk on the show talking about the plans for Raheem Mostert and how effective he was when he was healthy. Now that was before they drafted Trey Sermon. That was before they drafted Trey Sermon. But that doesn't um, – it doesn't really worry me because I know that this team – I mean, look at every offseason. We spend our offseasons talking about how many running backs the San Francisco 49ers have. But those that pick the right player get great rewards for that. You know, we sat here with Matt Breida and Jarek McKinnon and Raheem Mostert before and Jeff Wilson. So he's a name that I would consider here, most certainly. Um, other wide receivers, I'll, I'll just throw it out there. He's a little bit further down the ADP board, but Jamar Chase could take a chance on a, a rookie. Um, you've got I, I, Brian and Ayuk out there, and you could go uh, Aaron Rodgers. There's also a wide receiver here. I, I don't know if he could even get back to us on the next pick. This is our long turn, so probably not. But there is a wide receiver here that, let me just say, the chances of him – Stop hiding names, Jason. I'm I'm getting to the name. It's building up. I'm, I'm creating the anticipation here. Come along for the ride. All right. He's usually a top 15 wide receiver. Brandon Cooks is still like I know. Of course, Brandon Cooks is still. You're shocked that he's still there. No, no, no. I'm saying Brandon Cooks is still the number one wide receiver for his team, and the target. Like when I statted out the Texans, I I've got Tyrod Taylor as the whole season. That's how I statted yeah, but him they're out. Gonna, they're going to have a number two at quarterback. Yes, but that, I mean, I I'm just saying the the entire two career, plus one, the entire career of Brandon Cooks is, has. Always, he's yes. always been good. That's fair. Um, so maybe he makes it back to us personally. If we wanted to go running back, uh, Mostert's there. I've got Mike Davis. Um, you know, probably higher. I, I'm fine. I think we can go just about any direction. All right, Mike, here. the picks back to you. Make your selection with a conviction and strength that we've never seen before. <sighs> he's gonna take Odell. <laughs> I want to. It's your pick, man. Uh, you were you won the draft. You won the mock draft season last year. Mm, no, I mean, take your my guy, Odell Beckham Jr. Mm, oh, what is happening? Early my guy. 
What, him and Miles Sanders? Him and Miles like, Sanders. Two of the three? Well, now, in fairness, I made up the Miles Sanders thing, which is a known you know, yeah. grievance well, he, of yours. You brought up the Oda. The Odell Beckham is a legitimate your guy. Yeah, as is Troutman. So you got your three. I'll figure right. it out. Um, I'll take. Make your pick. Oh, my gosh. I, I'll take Raheem Mostert here. All right, you made the right pick. Brandon Ayuk <laughs> went next. Aaron Rodgers, Damian Harris, Odell Beckham Jr. Oh, team number four. Russell, Robin Beckham, what a Wilson. great pick. Uh, Goddard, breakout candidate this year. Mike Davis at the end of the sixth round. Justin Herbert off the board. My One of my favorite quarterbacks of the year is just still out there. My number four quarterback, Tom Brady, oh, still man. out there. I think we can wait a whole nother round. Tom Brady. Oh, my god! He is officially, like, barring change, he right. will be a my guy. And – you you were messaging us because you had, you had finished your projections for Tampa Bay before anyone else, and you're like, guys, I think I gotta lock this in, uh, just going off of what my projections are doing, and it was wow, that is, that is okay, that that's wild. But then you go and you look, once things clicked for Tom Brady, when I, I mean the way I was talking about Baker Mayfield, but things take a while in the Bruce Arian system. It's been shown from every quarterback he has worked with, they always get much better in the second season. But you saw it turn around for Tom Brady in the second half of the season when he just was I mean, he was on pace to throw for over 5,000 yards in a season, and that was just the second half of the first season. That wasn't – Yeah, missing the, half of the last game. And that, game. Was, that was with – I mean, Chris Godwin in and out of the lineup. He, he was not dealing with his full arsenal of weapons. To, and that's a variable. Those guys get hurt again. But if everyone is there – how is Tom Brady not throwing there, for 4,500 yards and 40-plus touchdowns? He, he will. And I'm, I'm telling you this, the important thing to remember, and you're going to hear the refrain, they have one of the easiest schedules in football. That's just a rotational thing. They didn't give it to Tom Brady. It's the way the rotational yeah, sure they didn't. situation happens. But here's the highlight. Tom Brady did throw 40 touchdowns last year. Last year. His pace in the second half was astronomical. But right now, I have him projected for 41. That's not a leap, and he's my number four with over 5,000 yards, so he is somebody we need to pay attention to. Chark, Sutton, Claypool, Fant, Boyd, and Robbie in the seventh round. When you are sitting on the, the close turn, okay, so there's, there's four teams that are going to be picking twice before we pick again. Um, we're at the eighth spot. What you want to do when you're deciding, do we take Tom Brady? Do we hope he can make it back around? You look at those teams and you say, well, do they need quarterbacks? Right now, I believe two of those four teams do not have a quarterback on their roster yet. That is correct. So if there's a good chance between you know those four picks between those two teams um, that they pull the trigger on a quarterback, and let's just say that it was Tom Brady, that leaves us a tier down. Now, I would go with Jalen Hurts at that point. I know, Andy, I that would, would hurt your soul. I would go with Hurts. Um, and I would be fine with Hurts. But I also do have Brady. Like, you, you two were uh, expounding your love, and it was eloquent and beautiful and wonderful. I have Brady very, very high as well. So I think we're all in agreement there. Brady, I have him, Brady bros? We're Brady bros. <laughs> I have him ahead of Herbert, ahead of Rodgers, ahead of Prescott. And that shocked me. Um, Likewise. This was not an agenda. No, no. This, this was is, how it turned out. Let's just take him. Oh, not lose him? Let's just not lose him. I mean, this is early for us, seventh round. I see yeah. Mike grimacing, and you'll That's never know if he would have gotten back around to us. gross. What, well, what's interesting is that one of the teams did select Jalen Hurts, so who knows what would have happened if Brady was still sitting there. Seventh round Tom Brady will look like a steal, Mike. It will look that way. It, In a 12-team league, that will look very good one day. It might. Fuller? Nobody wants to draft Will Fuller. Fuller went off the board after Brady. Nobody wants to draft him. That's probably stupid. It's insane. Will Fuller was incredible last year. Like he was a league winning player that you drafted right in the same range. And this it, it's it is this is a full on barrage from what people think about Tua. It, it, this is if if Will Fuller were playing with a a known veteran quarterback who liked to air it out. Like if Ryan Fitzpatrick were still the Miami Dolphins quarterback, we would all be very excited for Will Fuller, but we're all freaked out by what Tua put on film last year. Yeah, Tua ended up my 20 Tua. Ooh. Ooh. 
Now that one, I feel like you had to fudge. <laughs> you had to fudge your numbers just to make I, I sure. I did. I just looked. Make sure he ends up at twenty two. Uh, we're gonna try to. We'll try to speed it up a little bit here. But uh, Brandon Cooks, Jason, you mentioned him, still on the board. Brandon Cooks or Jamar Chase? What is your philosophy, Mike? Here we have two wide receivers. We have Travis Kelsey. We have three running backs, and we have Tom Brady. How do you make a decision between somebody like Brandon Cooks and somebody like Jamar Chase at this point in the draft? Um, it's far more fun to draft one of them. Mm -hmm. It's more fun to draft Jamar Chase. It's way more fun to draft Jamar Chase. But it's also the worst decision because rookie wide receivers – Wouldn't have been a bad decision to draft Justin Jefferson over Brandon Cooks last year. Yes, we can all point out the – greatest rookie wide receiver season of all time and say, wouldn't you have wanted yes. to have the best one ever? You're saying you wouldn't have wanted that? I am I am saying that it's probably not in your uh, odds on. He would have been cooking by the books. Um, he, I, I, I would go Brandon Cooks. I totally knew that the argument would be Brandon Cooks versus Jamar Chase. Jamar Chase is the new hotness, the hopeful, the young super stud, can't miss generational prospect. Um, but he could. And we only have two wide receivers right now, right? Correct. So this is a really important piece to the roster. If if this player busts, if this player is not that involved or takes longer to – if Joe Burrow takes a while to get going and then he's the third target in the let offense. Me, let me ask you a real question here. Okay. I'm, I'm going to try to be thoughtful about this because I know you've been backing up Brandon Cooks. What's the difference between Brandon Cooks and saying you want to draft Corey Davis right here? Because uh, because I'm looking at those situations where you're the number one on a team with ambiguity and lack of confidence at the quarterback position. Houston might be the worst team in football. I think they are definitely they're working on the it. worst team in football. And the Jets, but, I, but but why not make the case for like? Do you believe Brandon Cooks is actually stable on this Houston roster? I think that Brandon Cooks. I mean, I let me show you what I have him statted for. What I my belief can is. Show you. Um, I have him with 135 targets, which works out to 89 receptions, 1,238 yards, and five touchdowns, which is a nothing beyond what he is capable of doing. But I think he is going to be a staple. I mean, this is a team that's going to be down. They're going to be throwing the ball every single game and it's Brandon Cooks and nobody there. So, he's going to he's going to end up with 130 to 140 targets. This is like I have Brandon Cooks three spots ahead of Jamar Chase in my rankings. Uh so I will I will take him. Gross. I would have 1000% uh, taken Jamar Chase. Do you have Jamar Chase ahead in your rankings? I understand rankings yes. aren't everything, but you do have him Ranked higher. Where yes. do you have Brandon Cooks? Uh, somewhere on here. Uh, in my forties. <laughs> it's Tyrod Taylor. Do you, do we do you not remember sitting at this Might table? Might not be though. It okay. Well, right now it's projected to be Tyrod Taylor. Uh, and everyone, all three of us, going, man, what do you do with Keenan Allen? Because Tyrod Taylor is going to be the starter for the Chargers, and he was. If I mean, you have one fluke. Uh, injection g hitting him in the lung that put Justin Herbert in that changed everything. But no one wanted to draft Keenan Allen at all. And Keenan Allen is a better wide receiver than Brandon Cooks. I agree, but the difference was Keenan Allen was in – you're, you're Allen looking was, at him in the third round. Yeah, not the eighth round. He was, this is an eighth round pick. Right. That's and, where he should be. Well, let me tell you what wide receivers went after, and you can tell me whether you have regret, Jason. Okay. Brandon Cooks, we took him. I didn't really ask permission. I just did it. because I already regret it. Because we need to get towards the back of this draft. But Chase, Samuel, Landry, Judy, Devontae Parker went after him. He does seem like a target volume that is unparalleled compared to all of those other guys. I bet Except we for maybe Jamar Chase. I bet we could have drafted Jamar and then gotten Brandon Cooks right here. I, I doubt, doubt it. But I, it's, it is possible. I think that come draft season, Jamar Chase – will certainly be drafted ahead of Brandon Cooks. Uh, I, I think that would be a mistake, but uh, I have Brandon Cooks ahead of all of those names you just mentioned. Yeah, and um, I looked at my numbers. I have them over 90 receptions. So they may be ugly, but I think it, they, they still get the ball the same amount of times as Houston got the ball last year in terms of how the game of football is played. It may be Davis, what is it, Davis um, Mills? Yes. But... It might be ugly, but it might be productive. And when you look at our third number or our third receiver, it's uh, it's him or Chase, and, and we went Cooks. Coming back here, I do have an interesting question for you. Are you actively targeting 
Trey Sermon in this draft because of the Mostert pick, or is that nope. simply filling up your roster with uh, a player you never feel like you can drop? Yeah, I would. I would not be doing it. Whenever there is one of those amb ambiguous am am. Ooh yep. man. Amb yep. That's you, what you, it was. Where's you paused, <laughs> then you went with it. Yeah. You paused, and then you told yourself but, that that wait, is guys, correct. Guys, my brain can't remember what it is. It's ambiguous. <laughs> ambiguous. No, it's it's ambiguous. Ambiguous. Amadeus. Oh, Amadeus. <laughs> oh man. That's ambiguous. That's uh, that's the hot new restaurant downtown. Right. Yeah. Ambiguous. Is you want to eat you can't there? Get reservations. You have no idea what you want whenever you eat there. They're like they're not even sure what their menu is. They're <laughs> ambiguous. Um. Wow. Um, <laughs> that was incredible. But what I was going to say is whenever you have one of these ninth two, round vocabulary, one of these situations where you have a somewhat untrustworthy rotation third at, wide receiver at the, at the running back situation, um, you know, New England Patriots of old, the San Francisco 49ers of current where you're not always sure who the starter is going to be. I do not like clogging the roster with Ooh, I'm going to just take all of them because I know some because then you have to make that decision and you get it wrong sometimes. Just take the guy you think it's going to be and hope you're right and if not move on versus okay. uh, clogging it up. Um Corey Davis still on the board, Michael Gallup, Mike Williams, Antonio Brown, Jalen Waddle. You could take your rookie here, Mike. Waddle Waddle. Uh No, thank you. No, thank you. Pass. Uh running backs on the board, Singletary still there, Gus Edwards, uh somebody that no one will want to draft, but might have value this year. Michael Carter. Uh, we're kind of locked up on I, quarterback look, and tight end, so what are you guys thinking? I would go wide receiver, and I would go with a rookie wide receiver that I think is personally going to – Devonta Smith. Yeah, absolutely. Devonta Smith. Uh, between him and Jamar Chase, okay, Jamar Chase has the better quarterback, but Jamar Chase is battling it out with – a hundred plus targets to T Higgins and a hundred plus targets to Tyler, Law, uh, to, uh, Tyler Boyd, T Tyler Boyd, and um, big U.S. <laughs> and so I, I think that Devonte Smith, if you want a rookie wide receiver, that's the way I would go. Uh, and if I'm looking at wide receivers at this point that you're, you're trying to take the shot. And we talked to, we, we mentioned this team earlier in the show that you have no idea who the number one wide receiver is. And that's the Indianapolis Colts. And I know we, we, we like to joke about Michael Pittman's one route, but Michael Pittman was a very high uh, second-round pick. They drafted him before Jonathan Taylor. And T.Y. Hilton is the aged veteran at this point. If Carson Wentz has anything left and with his being reunited with, his, with Frank Reich, Michael Pittman is the one on this offense that I would project to take the big leap and a potential – top 24 wide receiver in the ninth round, that's where I would go. So you'd go Pittman, I would go Smith, and Andy gets the pick. I do? Yep, because we both chose different people. So Well, you're the problem have I to... have with Pittman is he could as, just as easily be the number three target on the offense with Paris Campbell returning, run heavy offense, T.Y. Hilton. Um, and so I'll go Devontae Smith. I don't think there's any chance he's the number three on that offense. And so I'll take the volume. I, I, do, say think, I is... do think Pittman can make the leap. <laughs> I'd say there is a – there's definitely a chance that Smith is a three. Like, if if it's up to Jalen Rager, though. But you could have Jalen Rager and you could have Dallas Goddard be the top two targets for them. Okay. Well, I, I also knew Pittman would be around later, so I didn't feel the need to take him. Uh, Devonta Smith, Singletary, Corey Davis, Hollywood, um, Irv Smith. Hollywood! I really like Irv Smith this year, guys. I think he has an opportunity. I, yeah, he is an opportunity, but – He surprised me in my projections. It's – but the problem with going with Irv Smith is it all comes down to touchdowns. If he if he gets nine or more, then you're really happy with also the Irv the Smith problem, pick. Also the problem, it's the same problem with Mike Kosicki, with Robert Tunyon. It's the same problem with Logan Thomas and Noah Fant. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I completely agree. It's the agree. tight end problem. I completely agree, but even I feel like even Mike Kosicki and Logan Thomas will see regular volume as compares to, uh, compared to Irv. Sure. Like Just, he'll be a if you get, if Irv Smith sees four targets a game, that's a great success. Just draft Hawkinson this year, everybody. Yeah, you're that bullish on Hawkinson. I am. I think I've got him with almost 140 targets. Now you know that the, if he turns the target into a drop, it doesn't count as any points. I am aware. Yeah. Okay, not a great catch rate. Um, all right, we're in the tenth round, Mike. I want to give you this pick. Some options at running back are uh, they're they're not great. 
Trey Sermon is there. Michael Carter, you could take a shot at a rookie, see if he establishes himself in training camp. Right. Um, I don't think that there are other great ones. I mean, Jamal Williams, ew. Uh, not somebody that you necessarily see upside with. Wide receivers, you could go with Pittman if you want to take him here. You got Waddle. You've got Marvin Jones. T.Y. Hilton. You know, you talk about Pittman or T.Y. Hilton. Um, it was Hilton that outperformed Pittman last year. So where yeah, are you at? As, as a rookie, uh, I'm just projecting the, the leap for Michael Pittman. But right here, because we just went back-to-back -back with the wide receivers uh, and the very ambiguous running back situation of the New York Jets, Michael Carter is not my favorite. I've talked about him before, but he would be my pick here. All right, Michael Carter. Michael Carter was the pick. I like the opportunity. It's hard at the running back position because you know that uh, how thin it gets later in drafts, and also you're just looking for opportunity. And the offensive line, I, I love the offensive line in New York, so I think Carter is a, is worth the dart throw in the 10th round. Um, a couple more quarterbacks went in the, uh, the rest of the 10th round here, Matt Ryan, Ryan Tannehill. And you're starting to see things really thin out. I mean, Tyler Higby, I think he's interesting. He went in the 10th round here at tight end. And then uh, going into the 11th round, that's where Marvin Jones went off the board. Trey Sermon did go, so that temptation is removed. Evan Ingram, Hunter Henry, and we're back on the clock here in the 11th round. Jalen Waddle, another rookie, still on the board. Oh, this seems like, uh, I know, Mike, you're very upset that we took Brandon Cooks instead of Jamar Chase. Correct. Incorrectly uh, being upset. But um, what is nice is Michael Pittman is still here. So if that was a player you liked a couple rounds ago, that would make the most sense to me to grab him here. And that would easily be my pick. Yeah. Well, it is your pick. And Michael Excellent. Pittman is now on our roster, and he's very happy to be there. Blake Jarwin next. Mooney. Uh, Waddle went at the end of the 11th, and we're back around the quick turn. T.Y. Hilton did go, and he went after Pittman, and he went in the 12th round. It is ironic. We could have taken T.Y. Hilton over I did, Pittman. I did bring that up before, yeah. Um, I would have taken Hilton over Pittman, but it – I think I understand what Mike's saying, which is this is an opportunity for a leap and a ceiling we don't know. Hilton ceiling, we've seen it. It's not coming back. Correct. And um, if you think about Wentz developing a new rapport, maybe it's with Pittman. Maybe Pittman takes a step forward, so I'm comfortable there. Uh, you guys brought up Henry Ruggs. He's still on the board. Um, Jason, you talked about a breakout opportunity. I think we need to ensure some depth at our, our running back position. Um, well... <laughs> I'm looking through the list. I don't know if there's... J.D. McKissick is the least sexy pick under the sun, but he will have a huge opportunity again this year. I I don't know if he will or yeah, not. Yeah, I'm, I'm not... The, I'm, I'm certain of it. I, you two should listen to me on this one. I'm the, telling you I without certain, a doubt he will. What? But what does that mean? You, you're what you're that, certain of, uh, of what? I'm certain of the fact that he will have a very similar snap count that he had last year. And he may. He, he might be on the field. His targets. But he won't see the targets that Alex Smith and company were checking down to him all the time. We're like, that's Ryan Fitzpatrick doesn't do that. That's not part of his DNA as a quarterback. Where where Alex Smith had, was was barely playing on two legs, so to speak. And and that's where McKissick did everything. Is and you had to be in some type of full PPR uh, to really experience. Or, I mean, I guess he was okay in half, but. I'm I'm really out on McKissick seeing the same opportunities. He might be on the field, but he won't. He, to me, will not see the opportunities. All right. So Jason, between Henry Ruggs, uh, Nelson Aguilar, who's likely to be the one in New England if Mac Jones ends up winning an opportunity to throw the football as opposed to run it like Cam Newton. Um, James White is still there. Yeah, I mean, this is not. You're not going to be excited about what's happening right now. No, so make the, a pick. The, the two the two guys that I like are both at wide receiver, Henry Ruggs and Josh Reynolds. Um, Josh Reynolds will have volume, but we've already kind of got that. I think what, about what you're Elijah looking Moore? for at the end, Elijah Moore is very exciting. I think what you're looking for at the end of a draft is huge upside, uh, opportunity to take that step so forward. That would be Ruggs. So, I didn't hear his name. We, we threw out a flurry of names. Have you completely written off Jalen Rager? No, I have not completely written off Jalen Rager, no. But I do think that Devontae Smith comes in at the wide receiver position, becomes the one Jalen Rager is now the wide receiver two for that team. Whereas Ruggs has the opportunity now with Nelson Aguilar gone to truly be the one. And you brought it up earlier. Dallas Goddard will be heavily targeted. Yes. Devontae Smith will demand targets because he will always be open. And Jalen Rager will be playing the small piece of the 
Jalen Hurts pie. Jalen Hurts cannot throw for a million yards and run for a million yards. Those Agreed. things can't happen. Doesn't matter. You know, if you're Lamar Jackson, Trey Lance, something's coming away from the passing game if you run for 800 yards. Um, I'm fine with rugs here. We'll make that pick. The, something to remember out there. If you're playing the the last couple picks on your draft, you would like to see some instant payoff in the season. You want to know if this was a smart or dumb pick. So Pittman and Ruggs, those are players that you can see a potential quick quick evidence of whether that pick was worth it or not. Because if it's not, you're going to drop them and you're going to pick up that waiver wire guy. Um, and, and that's the way it's going to go. So at this point in the draft, last round's just a defense. I grabbed the 49ers for us, and that is a wrap. We G- did Give me it. some impressions of this team. We have Harris and Jacobs at running back, Diggs and Lockett starting a wide receiver, Kelsey at the tight end position, Brady's our quarterback, and the depth on this team is Mostert, Cooks, Devontae Smith, Michael Carter, Michael Pittman, and Henry Ruggs. I, I think it's a solid team. I, I will say that I felt the lack of one extra stud running back or wide receiver because of the Travis Kelsey pick, and I usually feel much more confident when I've got – you know, if, if we had added to it another Devontae Adams, for instance, instead of Travis Kelsey, then our team would feel much better, get a later round tight end. But when you play the season out, the positional advantage. Yeah, you're not going to feel get, that way in week two. No way. Not not when you have Travis Kelsey outscoring every other tight end by five to ten points in every matchup. Mike? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm very happy going with the Travis Kelsey pick early I get what you're saying Jay of that that feeling of of missing out on someone the there was a chance Kelsey came in the second round there was a chance but I wasn't I didn't want to mess around if we were at 110 it would have made the Kelsey value better but there also would have been a better chance for you to get him at the 203 205 you start to play a dangerous game where in your league he's probably not there at 205 in most leagues I would agree he he's Sometimes sneaking to the very, very tip top of the second round, usually the, at the end of the first. The only, and this is just full, full hindsight analysis. The but, best kind. <laughs> but Travis Kelsey at the one eight, I have no regrets here. But do you? Do either of you have regrets seeing that George Kittle fell all the way to three one? Oh, well, wouldn't have gotten around to us in the third. We wouldn't have no, taken no, no. Him but in I'm second, just so. saying, like when you're comparing the value of Kelsey of Diggs, what Adams, Kittle, those would have been two choices we could have had. We could have ended up Adams Kittle, or we could have gone Kelsey Diggs. I'd rather have Kelsey Diggs. Yeah, I would, I, I would too. All right, you guys, let us know what you think, though. Leave us some comments. Talk to us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. Um, a reminder to check out Sleeper. They're the uh, best and always improving. Um, league platform of choice and uh, it's fun to do mock drafts over there it's fun to get involved they're adding uh, some best ball features this year they're expanding functionality to a lot of different league formats and it's just becoming kind of the place to be our listener league is uh, going to be on sleeper always is so yeah. and the megalable and the megalable oh, oh my gosh <laughs> <laughs> so brooks anything i'm i'm forgetting before we sign off here no sir all right. You hopefully, made it through, Andy. Hopefully I have a, a slightly more improved uh, vocal range when we hit Tuesday next week. But thank you for supporting the show, for listening. You can check out the community at jointhefoot.com, youtube.com slash the fantasy footballers, and we'll be back with another show next week. Goodbye. Explain yourself. Mm. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.